Hello, let's take a look at what we will learn in this section. The first video will be about class-based views. Afterwards, we will introduce Django REST framework and in the next two videos, we will discuss some important components of Django REST framework, namely views and view sets, routers and serializers. Let's begin with the first video. This video is about class-based views. Class-based views are an alternative to the function-based views that we have written so far. Let's open courses views.py in our text editor. The first thing we want to do is add a line to our imports. We import detail view, create view and list view from django.views.generic here. Then we add a new class to our views module called course detail view, which subclasses from detail view. On this class, we set a class attribute, which specifies the model this view will operate on. You probably remember that a Django view is a callable object that accepts a request and returns a response. With this class, this is not the case. So you cannot use a class-based view directly. You have to call the sView method on the class. This method returns a callable object, which you can then use in place of the function-based view. So this object here called course detail, this is the object we can use to replace our function-based view from earlier. So always remember that the actual view is returned by the sView method on the view class. If you compare the function-based view with the class-based view, you can immediately see that the class-based view is extremely simple. We only specify the model that we want to show a detail page for, and that's it. However, maybe you ask yourself how the class-based view knows which template to render and how to retrieve the course object from the database. We can either give that information to the class-based view by setting some class attributes or overriding some class methods, or we can just go with a default convention. In this case, our template name is already using the default convention, so we do not need to specify anything explicitly for the template name. However, we do need to adjust our URL conf because this keyword argument course ID here is not going to work by default. So we open eLearningURLs.py and then we change the course ID name here to simply pk. That's the default keyword argument name that the class-based view expects. pk stands for primary key. Now we can go back to our views module and simply delete the function based view because we don't need it anymore. And if we then open our web browser and go to the detail view for a course, you can see that it's still working. So it's now using our new class based view. For our course list view, we can do almost exactly the same as for the detail view. We write a new class called course list view. This time we subclass from list view and then we specify our model as a class attribute and then we call s view to get the actual usable view object. However, we have a small performance optimization in the function based view, which is the usage of prefetch related. And of course, we would like to keep that behavior for our class based view. And to do this, we can simply specify the query set class attribute. This tells the list view superclass which query set to use. So this is all we need to do to override the query set and keep our performance optimization. However, we also need to make a small adjustment to our template. So we open courses, templates, courses, course list .html. And the thing we need to change here is the name of this object in the template context because the list view by default uses the name course list and not courses. So 
we change this here. With this, our list view is working and we can delete the function based view. Next, let's replace the course add view. The class based view looks like this. We specify our model again and then we specify a class attribute called fields. This is usually a list of fields that this view should accept. In this case, I'm a bit lazy and I just specify the special string under under all under under. I actually recommend that you do not do this in real world applications. The problem is that if you add some new fields to your model later, that should not be writable by a user and you forget to update the fields list here, then you have a security problem. So usually I just specify the list of fields explicitly but in this case it's okay if we go with uh, all fields of the model. If you compare this class-based view with the function-based version you can see why many people like class-based views. It's a bit less code and it is arguably a bit simpler than the function-based view. However it's also in a way more implicit with the function based view, the control flow is more clear and it's all in one place. This is an advantage, especially when debugging problems. If you are debugging problems in a class based view, you oft often have to dig into a number of superclasses or mix ins. So, class based views are useful, but they also come at a price. But in this case, we want to go with the class based view, so let's delete the function based one. Let's take a look at our do test view. This view would probably be very hard to turn into a class based view in any useful way. We could definitely write this as a class based view. It's not that it's difficult, but in my opinion, it would not provide any benefit. And the reason for this is that in this view there is almost nothing that we can share with other views. There's almost no shared logic. This is a rather specific view. So this is a view that in my opinion is perfectly fine as a function based view. The advantage is that we can see the control flow better and in this case I like to keep this as a function based view. To sum this up, class based views provide a good way to reuse common logic among views and they often allow us to write our views with less code. But that comes at a price. Class based views are often harder to understand and debug. In this video, I only gave a short introduction to class based views. To learn more about them, have a look at the official Django documentation and there's also an, a third party website I can recommend which is ccbv.co.uk. On this website you will find a lot of useful API documentation for class based views.